Hey yo, what it do, baby? It's your boy Dynamic, and right off the bat, I want to talk about the new camos that came out in Black Ops 2 camo slash personalization packs. And right now, I'm using the cyborg, as you can see in the game. And I'm just gonna say, it just it just looks amazing. It just looks amazing. Watch, see when the game starts now. Ah oh, man, it looks so good, and I'm glad that players players had a chance to vote. Obviously, most of you probably voted. I didn't get on on Call of Duty while the voting was going on. I don't even know if the voting was done in game, but judging from the four ones that we had to choose from, I would say that players pretty much picked the best two. As soon as I saw them right off the bat, I was like, nah, the Cyborg and the Dragon, those are the ones that got to make the cut. And man, they, you guys picked them and well, the whole Call of Duty community picked the best looking ones. And I think they actually made a good choice by letting people pick. But I think that Treyarch should have put more camos to choose from. I think they should have had eight different camos and then let us choose four because two is just a little bit too small. And I played a lot of people yesterday that had that bought the two camos, especially since I bought the maps, all the maps. And usually players that buy all the maps buy everything in the game. As soon as I bought the camos... And I got on, everybody had them already, so. But it's, they still look pretty sweet. As you can see, I picked up an SMG with the same cam of the Cyborg. It just looks amazing. But another thing that I've noticed, though, after buying all the map packs, now that I'm talking about that, is that players, I think players who bought the map pack are better, in general, than the average players that I was playing before the map packs came out. The reason being that when I search and I'm by myself, I'm only getting put into a pool of players. The game is only looking for players that have the maps. So right off the bat, there is a smaller amount of people that have the maps. And usually players that buy the maps are COD enthusiasts like me. And usually players that are COD enthusiasts usually are good players. So I find myself going into lobbies with really, really good players. And I have to say that it's probably a little tougher for me to get gameplays just because everyone is good but i like that though i like putting my try hard pants on and you know going in that sounded kind of gay well not really not really but somebody could turn that last quote into something else oh and if you guys are looking right now this guy was dead meat the game went into a host change whatever and i was right behind the guy when that happens and i know he was mad as hell because he, he probably didn't know I was behind him. But I for sure knew that he was in front of me. And I took complete advantage of that. The only thing I hate is when that happens. And I'm on the other side of the coin. Where I know someone is right behind me. And it's pretty much a guaranteed death. Some people actually quit when that happens. But I don't think that's reason enough to quit a game. Like I was saying before though. I like playing tougher players. Whenever there is a lobby that has a party. And they're all good players, probably just as good as me. What I try to do is I try to ruin their, I guess their little, I don't even know what to call it, but the little fun time, I try to ruin it. If I can't and I'm really getting beat down, at least I get experience and I learn from it and I try to get better as much as I can because I think for most people, I think there is a limit to how good you can be in a game. I think there is... I don't want to say there is a, a hard limit, but I think there is overall limit though. Like once you're a certain skill, it just, no matter how much work you put into it, it gets like incredibly harder to keep adding to it. When you're a beginner, it's a lot easier to learn. You learn a lot more. You can start out with a really bad KD and you put some work into it and you'll get a lot better. But once you're at the top, once you got the skills, to even improve a little bit, you have to put in so much work. But that's how it pays off, though. If you really want to be good at something, you got to put in the work. But I do agree, though, that it's kind of hard to put in the work when you play a video game. And it's hard to play most video games for a really, really, really long time. For years and years. I mean, you could in a game that you really, really love. But game physics aren't like real life. Things don't ever change. In real life, the limit is physics. Physics is really complicated. If you ever play basketball, you would know that you could probably do a million. You could probably play basketball a million times. And it, 
it's pretty difficult for the same thing to happen over and over again in the same way same animation and everything but in games animations are basically how can i say this limited limited animations and it gets really repetitive especially in call of duty you see how you reload it's basically two different reloads for every gun and basically when you run out of ammo you reload one way and if you don't run out of ammo and you just decide to reload it reloads the same way and a real person in real life doesn't you can reload the same way but it won't always look the same and i think that's something that's missing in games and i hope the next generation can maybe up the ante a little bit anyways players i'm at the end of the video if you like this video leave a like and subscribe it will help me out tremendously. Have a nice day and peace out, players. Oh, my God.